we'll be talking about section four or five, multiplying polynomials today. All right, so in order to multiply, one thing that I, I will keep bringing up today is something called the commutative property. The commutative property we did talk about in our last class, and the commutative property just says that order doesn't matter with addition or multiplication. Okay. Also, one other thing I wanna mention before we get into polynomials is that multiplying the same base we add exponents. So I just have a few problems here where um, we could see these properties. The directions will just be to find the product. And our first example, is 8k to the third y times 9k y to the third. We're multiplying the two of these together and some of you might be able to just tell me what the answer is. One thing that I like to do is I rearrange using the commutative property. So I'll just write this where it's eight times nine times K to the third times K times Y times Y to the third. So I'll just group them by similar terms. Nine times eight is 72. K to the third times K to the first is just K to the fourth. And Y to the first times Y to the third is Y to the fourth. You don't have to do that second step. For me, it's just easier. I find that the more steps that I show, the less likely I am to make mistakes. So that would be the full work that I would show for that. If we had a monomial, remember we learned about that last class, monomial just means single term times a binomial, 9R minus five. We could use what's called the distributive property here, where we multiply negative 2R times everything in that second parentheses. So we're gonna do negative two R times nine R. And then we're going to do negative two R times negative five. Remember you're multiplying by negative five. The sign belongs to the number. So negative two R times nine R and then negative two R times negative five would give us we could rearrange these, but it would be negative 18, R times R is R to the second. Negative two times negative five is positive 10 R. And that would be the answer. Just as a reminder, like terms mean the same variable and the same powers. All right, we'll keep adding some steps here. What about if we had X plus one times X minus two? We could FOIL, uh, FOIL means we multiply the first terms, X times X, the outer terms, 
which would be x times negative 2. The inner terms, 1 times x. And then the last terms, 1 times negative 2. So x times x is x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2. Now we could combine those like terms and just get x squared minus x minus 2. That would be a perfect answer if you wanted to leave it like that. And that's totally fine. That's how I'd say uh, most people do this kind of problem. Another way to think about this, this is actually where FOIL comes from, is to distribute. So x plus 1 times x minus 2. You don't have to do it like this. Sometimes when I'm teaching, I like to show different ways. We could think about it like we're doing x times this whole parentheses, and then, negative, and then positive 1 times this whole parentheses you get exactly the same answer. This is where FOIL comes from. You'd get x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2, which gives us the same thing. Most people choose to do this first technique, and that's totally fine. Uh, but some people also appreciate looking at it that second way. Let's keep going. Uh, what if we had 5r minus 3? times 2r minus 5. Again, we could FOIL, multiply 5r times everything in the second parentheses. 5r times 2r plus 5r times negative 5. And then we have the negative 3 times everything. Negative 3 times 2r and then negative 3 times negative 5. This would just be 10r squared minus 25r minus 6r plus 15. And combining our like terms would give us 10r squared minus 31r plus 15. Oh, I understand. I'm glad that you understand it. Uh, so let's move on to letter E. Uh, what if we had different variables? So 4y minus z times 2y plus 3z. And we're doing exactly the same thing with different numbers and different letters. So we'll do 4y times 2y, we'll do 4y times positive 3z, we'll do negative z times 2y, and then we'll do negative z times 3z. Multiplying this out, this would just be 8y squared. Now we could do 4 times 3, but we can't do y times z. So th those have to stay separate. And same thing with the z and the y. Those aren't the same. So we just write it as separately here. And then we have minus 3. Z times z is z squared. So if we have the same letter and we're multiplying, we add their exponents. If they're different letters, we just keep them separate. Uh, and looking at this, it looks like we do have similar terms here. Uh, so 12yz and minus 2zy, we know that commutative property says y and z 
is the same as z times y. So we'll just combine these to be 8y squared plus 10yz minus 3z squared. We talked about this before that standard form, usually we put the highest exponents first. Also, we write the letters according to the alphabet. So it'd be better to write yz than uh, zy. Y comes first. Uh, let's keep going here. What about if we had x plus 1 times x squared minus 3x plus 1? So we can't FOIL this because we have a binomial times a trinomial, but we will be doing the same thing. We're going to multiply x times everything, and then we're going to multiply 1 times everything. Everything in the first parentheses gets multiplied by everything in the second parentheses. So we're going to do x times x squared plus x times negative 3x plus x times 1 plus 1 times x squared plus 1 times negative 3x plus 1 times 1. So this will just be x to the third minus 3x plus x plus x squared minus 3x plus 1. And then writing in in standard form, we'll write from highest to lowest x to the third plus x squared. If minus 3x plus x minus 3x, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5x plus 1. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so negative 3x plus x is negative 2x. Negative 2x minus 3x is negative 5x. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I made a little mistake here. Thank you. It's x times negative 3x and then plus x times one. All right, so that does change things. Thank you, George. Uh, so just to fix this up here, we'll combine our like terms. So it would just be x to the third, negative three x squared plus one is negative two x squared. And then we have uh, just negative two x and plus one. That, that is the correct answer. I wanted to do one more of these before I show you some special cases. So what if we had 2a plus b times 3a squared plus 2ab plus b squared? We'll do the same thing we did before. We'll show all our work to minimize any potential mistakes. So I'll do 2a times everything. And then I'll do the b times everything.
and just multiplying this out, this would be 6a to the third plus 4a squared b plus 2ab squared plus 3a squared b plus 2ab squared plus b to the third. And then combining like terms, it looks like this is the only 6a to the third. This is an a squared b. We're looking for another like term. a squared b, we have one right, right here. So 4 plus 3 would be 7 a squared b. We have an ab squared right here and right here. So this would be 4ab squared. And then we have plus b to the third. And that would be our answer. I want to show you uh, something called special cases. And I'll caution with this, that you don't have to do it this way. These are shortcuts that just, it's one more thing to remember. It'll make your life easier, but it is also one more thing to remember. Generally, I don't memorize these things. I just do everything the long way, so I, I don't have to worry about remembering extra stuff, but I'll show you in case you uh, prefer to just memorize the shortcuts. So there's three types of special cases. If you take a look at these, the first one is if you have two terms multiplied together and one is positive between them, one's negative between them. This will always just turn into the first term squared minus the second term squared. You could do it the long way if you want. You'll get the same answer, meaning you just FOIL it out. Or if you see this, you just square X and you square Y. This one, you'll have the first term squared and you'll have the last term squared, but in the middle, you'll have two times the first and last. And then this third one, you'll have the first term squared and the second, and the second term squared, but in between you'll have minus two x, y. So let's go through what these examples could look like. The directions will just be to find the product again. Uh, let's say we had m plus 5 times m minus 5. If you wanted to, you could FOIL this like we talked about. But if you notice, this is an example of that first shortcut where you have m and 5 and different signs. So we could just say the answer is just m squared minus 5 squared, which is m squared minus 25. All right, let's get the second one. What if we had x minus 4y times x plus 4y? Same exact terms, just different signs. So we'll write this x squared minus 4y squared. x squared is just x squared, of course. And negative four, or 4y squared is just 4y times itself. 4y times 4y is just 16y squared. All right, uh, next we'll do 4y squared times y plus 7 times y minus 7. So 
So you can see that this is a shortcut right here. This is the same thing as just saying y squared minus seven squared or y squared minus 49. But don't forget you still had the four y squared in front. So once you do the shortcut, you would have to multiply the four y squared in, that was in front. So this would just be four y to the fourth minus 49 times four is 196 y to the second. Let's try a different shortcut. What if we had t plus nine to the second? This is an example of that second shortcut we talked about with x plus y to the second power. This is really wrong. Please don't ever do this if you distribute that too. That's really, really bad. If this was on an exam and you did that, I, I tend to give partial credit. I would not give any credit for that. That's how bad that is. That is. Uh, when you have something squared, we could do this two different ways. One way we could do it is by doing t plus nine times itself. The other way you could do it is by using the shortcut. The shortcut says you do t squared plus two times nine times t, and then plus t squared. That's what we wrote for the shortcut. If you look at the shortcut up here, we do the first term squared plus two times the first and last, and then plus the last squared. So this would be t squared plus 18t plus t squared. Or what is this? Uh, plus nine squared, I meant. Which is 81. You get the same answer if you foiled it or if you use the shortcut. If you foiled it, you would just get t squared plus 9t plus 9t plus 81, which gives you exactly the same answer. I generally just foil it like I told you, uh, but the shortcut is a little, it saves you one extra step. What if we had 2m plus 5 to the second power? Using the shortcut, this would just be 2m to the second plus 2 times 2m times 5 plus 5 to the second. Remember, when you square something, you multiply it by itself. So 2m times 2m is 4m squared plus 4 times 5 is 20m plus 25. So it is quite a bit shorter if you could remember that shortcut formula. I had two more examples with the shortcuts. If we had 3k minus 2n to the second power, We could use the shortcut. This would just be 3k to the second power minus 2 times 3k and 2n, and then plus that second term squared. This would just give us 9k squared minus 12kn plus 4n squared.
Uh, one more example. What if we had x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3? So what you want to do is you just want to multiply two at a time, and then you multiply the other one. So you can't, there's no shortcut where you do x times x times x. It doesn't work like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to multiply x plus 1 times x plus 2, which would just be x squared plus 2x plus 1x plus 2. which simplifies to x squared plus 3x plus 2, and we're going to multiply that by x plus 3. So x squared times x now is x to the third. x squared times 3 is 3x squared. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 3 is 9x plus 2x plus 6. So you just have to be careful and you have to be organized. Combining our like terms gives us x to the third plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. Okay, and uh, to finish up this section, I wanted to talk about how to multiply polynomial functions. And all this means is if given f of x and g of x, f g x just means f of x times g of x. There's a lot of jargon here, but it's, it's quite simple. So let me show you a couple examples. Uh, so let's say given f of x is equal to 3x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 2x minus 5, I want to find f times g of x. All this means is just do f of x times g of x. f of x we know is 3x plus 1. g of x we know is 2x minus 5. So all this tells you to do is just multiply them together. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x plus 2x minus 5. Similar to what we were doing before, except we're using different notation. This would be 6x squared. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13x minus 5.
We'll do one more. Uh, what about F times G of two? What this means is This means find f times g of x and then put in 2 for x. So we did that before. We did that in this step. So we said f of g of x is equal to 6x squared minus 13x minus 5. So all we have to do is just plug two in for X. This will be six times two squared minus 13 times two minus five. Uh, six times four minus 26. 24 minus 26 is negative two minus five is negative seven. <clears throat> 